while death comes for all, we do not fear it. We transform it. Raise the spirits of the dead. We transform into death itself. And we reap and we drain the life of our victims. For we are Lich. Hello Travelers, Boardman21 here and today's build is the Lich using Wandering Spirits, Reaper Form, Death Seal, Spirit Plague, and Drain Life. And the way this build is going to work is you're going to be stacking massive amounts of damage, mostly poison and damage over time, and using those to allow yourself to summon as many Wandering Spirits as possible. And then as soon as you have as many spirits as you'd like, you use Drain Life to get even more spirits. And on top of that, Drain Life will do massive amounts of damage along with everything else, which is going to let you just annihilate all the mobs on the screen. You can also attack multiple things at a time while channeling Drain Life, which means that it's not just good for single target, but you'll be able to kill all things on the entire screen with ease. You'll have so many wandering spirits that they themselves will also be attacking the nearest mob to all of them. So it's great for taking out whole screens of mobs and it's great for taking out single targets. In fact, it's so good for taking out single targets that on the training dummy, we were able to do one and a half million damage with our dots, which is just a crazy amount to still be able to do in the game. And of course, when we went in the arena, you're just wiping out all of the mobs basically instantly, as all you have to do is run around and when you feel like it, hit them with drain life. Alright, let's go ahead and get into the skills. One thing I do want to say about the skills is I'm going to go into a lot more detail about the skills and the nodes we take and why we take them, because a lot more people have been asking for a lot more information on why we go a certain route that we do. So I'm going to go over a lot of the interactions and why they work so well. For skills, we're running Drain Life, Death Seal, Reaper Form, Wandering Spirits, and Spirit Plague. For Drain Life, this is going to be our main single target DPS skill. It's also going to allow us to get more Wandering Spirits, which on single targets will mean a lot more damage. It'll also clear mobs of screens a lot faster. We have four points in Empower Drain for more damage. One point in Lay Waste because we're not too worried about Leech, which we lose, and we get 100% increased damage, which is huge for the skill. One point in Blood Pack means it no longer has a mana cost, but will consume a little bit more of your current health. We're not too worried about that because we leech so much from elsewhere that your life is going to stay full anyways while you're using it. But now, with the no mana cost, you can now cast it and channel it forever. We also convert the base necrotic damage into poison damage because we're mostly stacking poison damage and damage over time for this build. We have two points in Thought Seal, which is useless because we don't have a channel cost, but we do need to put two points there to unlock the nodes that we do want, which is Condemption. Condemption, with four points in it, now applies four stacks of Damned each second. Damned is an ailment that will last for three seconds and has a 25 base necrotic damage and will reduce your target's health regeneration by 20% per stack. We have a lot of necrotic damage and because we have so many stacks of this that we'll be applying, it is a huge amount of damage and a big amount of DPS for us. This also unlocks Unholy Mass, which we have two points in, which allows us to do 42% more damage when we reached a threshold of caps. Now, there is no limit to the amount of damned caps, of damned stacks that you can have. However, once you've been doing it for a few seconds, you'll hit the max cap of damage, which will be 42%, and you'll be dealing a lot more damage. This works really well against single targets. We have two points in Word of Conviction, which increases the damn duration, so all those damn stacks will last a bit longer. And three points in Eternal Servitude to allow you to have 15 more Wandering Spirits while you are channeling Drain Life, which is huge. That's 15 more spirits that will be applying Poison and Ignite on hit around you. So especially for single targets, this just is a massive amount of damage, and you'll see when we go up against bosses that you'll be doing damage, and then all of a sudden you'll throw down death seal and you'll start using drain life and the damage just ramps up really quick because you'll be doing so much more damage and you'll have so many more wandering spirits applying more ailments for you 
for death seal we're using this to increase our damage and to increase the duration of our spirits we have two points in necrosis which are useless but it unlocks Eden treat the damned which allows us to have our wandering spirits increase their duration by three seconds which means they last longer which means you'll have more of them so while this is active you have an additional three second duration on them which is huge we have three points in motorium so that the duration of death seal itself lasts longer five points in corrupted consciousness so that for every three percent missing health that we have we have five percent increased damage this is multiplicative damage which is huge so it really increases your damage if you have a thousand percent damage and you are missing in this case we have one point in deadlocks so will always be missing 66 percent of our health it means that 66 divided by 3 gives you 22 points 22 points times the 5 percent per point means you have a hundred and ten percent increase which is a 2.1 multiplier so if you have a thousand percent damage and then you cast this you'll now have 2100 percent damage it's a huge multiplier and it's very nice for your build we have three points in desperate shroud so that we gain six armor per 10 missing health which is huge you'll have about 1800 missing health maybe a little bit more depending on how much health you have stacked in your build which means for us we're going to have about 1200 armor given to us which isn't huge we're mostly running away and dodging anyways but when you do take a hit it's very nice we have two points in pustilent presence for some more global poison chance this is nice for the wandering spirits as it gives them even more poison chance for reaper form you want to stay in reaper form at all times if you run out of it then you want to run around until you're back in it. it's going to increase the damage you do and it's going to increase the leech that you get from all the damage you do by a tremendous amount we have four points in mistress of decay to reduce the health drain that you have it also gives you 40 percent more damage over time we have four points in Harbringer of Blood, which increases your health leech by 40%. It increases your healing effectiveness, which is pretty much useless for us. And it gives you eight more health every time that you reap an enemy, which is huge. We have four points in Soul for a Soul to increase your damage by 80%. The reason this is big is when you use Death Seal while you're in it, this is doubled. We have four points in Reaper's Curse, so that we have 100% increase in damage and 100% increase crit chance. The crit chance isn't very important. Every time we do kill an enemy, we do lose 2% of our health, but again, you have so much leech that it definitely overtakes that. The 100% damage is definitely worth it. And then we have four points in Death's Door, so that reap hit damage per missing health is now 4% higher which is huge because we'll always be missing when death seal is active 66 percent of our health and then we also have increased damage at low health and you'll be at low health when you have death seal active so that's an additional another hundred percent all of those hundred percents are doubled when you use death seal for wandering spirits we have two points in souls of rage to give the spirits more move speed and damage one point in spectral so that they can now shoot a projectile with a hundred percent chance to poison on hit this projectile that they shoot will have the same ignite chance poison chance bleed chance all ailment chances that you have what's nice about it is since we're wearing soul fire they have 200 percent ignite chance and because we have the plague staff they have you know another 200 percent poison chance which means that each spear individually is going to be applying a lot of ailments and because we'll be stacking so many of them with our other skills it just means you're going to have a lot of dot damage we have three points in soul of filth so those projectiles can happen more often two points in spectral scorn so that you have a longer range with it four points in lingering souls is going to give your spirits duration four more seconds which is huge it means that since they last longer you'll have more of them three seconds or three points in spirit swarm increases the cooldown recovery by 45 percent which means that you can now recast the skill more often wandering spirits will continue to spawn even when the skill has been recast from the previous one so it just means more spirits and five points in thin veal means that you reveal them faster 35 percent faster at five points which means you get more of them in a shorter amount of time for Spirit Plague, Spirit Plague is going to give us more damage over time. It's also going to apply bleed and poison to your enemies, and it's going to have Plague. We have 5 points in Pestilence for 75% increased global damage over time, which means that Drain Life, your Wandering Spirits, everything's going to do more damage for every enemy that you've afflicted with Spirit Plague in the last 4 seconds.
We have three points in Hemorrhage for three stacks of Bleed inflicted, one point in Plague Burst for a chance for it to spread when you've hit an afflicted enemy, one point in Hindering Affliction so that you slow your enemies, one point in Efatuous Application so it has a longer duration and it's more mana efficient, two points in Toxic Transmission so that we now put two stacks of Poison on the enemy as well, one point in Plague Bearer so that we now Plague our targets, two points in Queen of Plague so that we have 100% more plague effect and one point endless decay so the plague has a longer duration. For passives we have 21 points in the base acolyte class with 8 points in blood aura, 5 points in blood pact and 8 points in forbidden knowledge. We have no points in the necromancer and 90 points in the lich with 8 points in crippling insight for the intelligence, 8 points in survival of the cruel for more health and for a lot of spell damage leached as health. We have 8 points in dance with death whenever you have death seal active you'll be considered low health which is going to give you 120% increased damage from this node that's going to be doubled from death seal itself so you're actually getting over 240% of all damage global damage because of this node. We have 1 point in desolation for some more damage over time, 8 points in lasting stench for more poison damage and so our poisons last longer. 8 points in Unclosing Wounds so that we have 112% of more damage of all types. 6 points in 3 Plagues so that we have our Poison pre Penetration that we want. 5 points in Contagion Engine. Whenever we kill an enemy for 4 seconds we'll have 100% increased damage over time. 10 points in Decaying Form for 130% more Poison Chance. This affects our Wandering Spirits as well so they also get this 130% which is huge. 5 points in Ageless Ascetic for more Leech, 5 points in Soul Maul for more Leech, 10 points in Mind Over Body for a crap load of Intelligence, and 8 points in Corrosive Consciousness for some more damage. For items, for the idols, you're going to want idols that have increased damage while transformed, increased spell damage while at low health, there are some other idols as well, there's health idols that you can do, Thor's leech idols of health on hit which don't really help you because you're not doing too much on hit so I wouldn't super recommend those uh, but really any idols will work for you I myself like the spell damage and the increased damage while transformed um, both of them help the wandering spirits do more damage both of them help drain life do more damage so you can do either uh, because you spend more time transformed than you do at low life depending on how much activity you have with death seal I would recommend going for the damage while transformed more than the spell damage at low life but you can stack them however you want now we are wearing a few uniques but none of them are required so we are wearing the plague staff and the reason we're wearing the plague staff is so that our wandering spirits have that chance to poison on hit and they have the chance to inflict plague on hit now this is really useful as the wandering spirits get that chance it means they get almost two stacks of poison for every hit that they do which is huge and that they're guaranteed to inflict plague if you do not have this staff you can wear any staff that you want obviously a sorcery staff or a uh, gate staff something much higher higher up that has more adaptive spell damage is going to be more useful. I would put on it spell damage, poison damage, uh, chance to poison, chance to ignite, basically things that are going to help your wandering spirits or drain life to do more damage. You can do damage over time, damage while channeling, and those types of things. The other unique that we have is Soul Fire. Soul Fire has a 200 and in this case 1% chance to ignite. I'm not sure how high it actually rolls because it doesn't tell us. I thought 200 was the highest and then I had this fall to me the other day which was just incredible because it tells me that it can go higher and I don't know how high that is. But we have a 201% chance to ignite on hit with fire skills and necrotic skills. Necrotic is important because our wandering spirits are necrotic. And because of that, it means that they get this 200% chance to ignite, which is huge. So not only do they get the 196% chance from our Plague Staff, but they're getting a 201% chance to ignite on hit from our Soul Fire. And these two things together are huge, which means they're putting two stacks of ignite, two stacks of poison, and we're getting a buttload more Wandering Spirits thanks to Drain Life and Death Seal, and we're increasing the damage they do. You can see how our damage is stacking so high so quickly. The other unique that we have is Shimmer's Essence, which gives us a 156% increased damage while transformed, and that 150%...
And that 156% increased damage while transformed is doubled when we have Death Seal. Now, those uniques are not required. Shimmer's Essence, you can wear an amulet that has, you know, increased damage, increased dot damage, and other things. For your relic, you can get more health leech, you can get more health itself. You can, you don't have to wear these, they're just going to increase the amount of damage that you have. Then for our crafted items, now these are kind of maxed out, they don't have the best rules possible, but they are tier 20 gear. You do not have to have tier 20 gear in order for this build to work for you, it's going to work early on in the game and it's going to do extremely well for the entire run from the beginning of the game to the end of the game. But getting closer to tier 20 or even finding some exalted items with these stats is going to give you a lot more survivability and a lot more damage. Now we went with increased cooldown recovery speed because we want our wandering spirits to come off cooldown as fast as as possible so that we can get even more of them so increase cooldown recovery intelligence health and percentage of damage leached as health while transformed that's the main reason why it's very important to always be transformed because between our chest piece and our helm we're getting over eight percent of all damage that includes dots leached as health while we're transformed so you're going to any damage you do wandering spirit dot damage all of it you're going to be leeching it which is huge on our chest we also have int and vitality and a huge percentage of increased health. For our rings we have damage leech as health on hit. Now we're not really doing any hits so that's not the big part. It's the 27% increased health leech that's huge. That 27% increases our percentage here. So if you have 10% of damage leech as health that 27% bumps it up to 13. We have it on our other ring as well which is another 27% which bumps us up to about 16. Uh, between those two things together it just increases your overall health leech even though you're not doing hits you are getting more leech and because we have such a huge percentage especially while in reaper form that gives you another 40 percent increase you're just leeching a huge amount of damage that you do as health and it's going to keep you full at all times for our belt we have ignite chance and dodge rating on potion use now the reason that you have ignite chance is because when you use a potion not only you but your wandering spirits as well are going to be doing another two to three stacks of ignite with every hit that they do that's huge for our brutes we went with vitality int and then lots of health we also have some move speed and for the gloves we went with more health leech int more health uh, we have hybrid and flat health on the gloves a couple of uniques that you can wear that we don't have here if you want even more damage is the Viper Tail. The Viper Tail will give you more poison on hit chance for you and your wandering spirits. It's not a huge amount so for me I wanted more survivability and more life so I chose to go with a belt that had hybrid and flat health on it. You can also wear a trophy gloves for more damage over time. However, again, it's a loss of life and some survivability so I chose not to use it. I also wanted more leech. For our character sheet, you can see we didn't go for any resistance and we actually go negative on a lot of our resistance when we're transformed. The moment that I'm transformed, you can see the only thing we have is 1% necrotic. Everything else is negative. However, that's not huge because you leech so much life, everything that you get hit for unless you get one shot is basically going to be replaced almost instantly. As you can see, our damages are pretty high. Now. When we transformed, these damages go up by quite a bit. And remember, the Wandering Spirits get these damages as well. So right now we have 700% spell damage, 400% damage over time, and 461% poison damage. That means our Wandering Spirits have all those stats as well. And since they're a spell, it means that when they do their hits, they do huge hits. It also means that when they do ailments, they're doing a huge amount of poison damage, damage over time. And because they have fire damage as well, the Ignite even does good damage. When we transform, you can see these are instantly just skyrocketed way up. We're at almost a thousand percent plus of all damages. And then when we use Death Seal on top of that, boom, we're boosted again. We went out transformation, but for a second there, you could see how we were over 2,000 to almost 3,000 percent damage, which is huge. Now, on top of that, when you use Spirit Plague, you're getting 75 percent more damage over time for all the enemies that you have hit with it in the last four seconds. So, if you use Spirit Plague on a couple of enemies while you're transformed and then you use Death Seal, you're going to have crazy amounts. I've had almost 20,000 damage over time, which means things just instantly died. So again, when you're transformed, and then when you're, you're death sealed, you can see we have 2,300, 2,800% 20, spell damage. You have 2,000 of all damage types. It's just a huge amount when death seal is active. And it's going to allow your wandering spirits just to clean up the mess, and that's why you see us killing the bosses so quick in the intro of this video. 
So for my skill rotation and how I actually play the build, I put Wandering Spirits and I put Reaper Form both on Autocast. And the reason for this is Wandering Spirits, of course, you always want on Autocast. And then for Reaper Form, if I do come out of it, I don't have to pay attention to its cooldown. It'll automatically put me back into it. It'll also have my movement speed much up because I'll constantly be reaping every chance that I get. All right, so now you can see just being in Reaper Form, and just by the Wandering Spirits, you can see that my life is staying full even with the huge degen that we have in Reaper Form because of the amount of damage that we're getting. And we're hitting the training dummy here for a quarter of a million damage, and that's without any other skills even active yet. Now when we hit with Spirit Plague, you'll see that our damage over time goes up. Now we only have one enemy here, so we're only going to get 75% damage over time from that but it does give you a little boost. Of course, more enemies is going to do more. The other thing that's going to happen is as soon as I hit Death Seal, we're instantly going to be doing a lot more damage. You can see we jumped from doing 200 to a, to a quarter of a million to over half a million damage. In fact, we're doing almost 600,000 damage there, and that was just with Death Seal active. The other thing that's gonna happen is now we're going to apply Drain Life. So you do a Spirit Plague, you activate your death seal and then you sit here with drain life and you can see that your damage is going to go even higher you can see here we're almost at one million damage of course hit with another spirit plague i like to get drain life a little bit and then another spirit plague activate your drain life hit it again and you're going to see that it just comes up over a million damage right there we're doing 1.1 1.2 we had 1.2 million damage on that for single targets, for everything, you're just going to absolutely annihilate them. And while channeling that skill, the amount of wandering spirits that you have, as you can see, they start to last longer and we just have more of them, start to take up the whole screen and there's just nothing that your enemies can do. They're just going to die to you almost instantly. The other thing you'll notice is we've been sitting here in Reaper form for a few minutes now and we haven't, we haven't came out of it. You're leeching so much of that damage that you're just going to stay in Reaper form at all times. Alright, I'm going to go ahead and give you guys some more gameplay.